Uh, we're here tonight with our former student, our alumna, Anna Conti. Hi, Anna, how's it going? Hello. <laughs> Good, so where are you now? Um, right now, I'm studying physics at the University of St. Andrews in Scotland. All right. And right now, I'm in Italy, but... Okay, so you're not in Scotland. I thought you were. Not right now, because oh. it's also December, so... It's December, yeah, let's say that for, for those who are watching this video. Uh, today is the 7th of December, 2020, and we are in lockdown or semi-lockdown here in Italy. Uh, Genova is in yellow state. But what about Scotland? You had to leave, basically, right? Well, not really. Okay. Like it was, it was not uh, compulsory. But okay, right now Scotland is in tier three, I think. Mm. So mm. it's also in a pretty strict lockdown. So I understand. So you graduated in May two thousand and twenty, which is pretty recent. Yes. A few years ago, it was a very special year because we were in lockdown for the first time the coronavirus outbreak and then you decided you wanted to study physics right so you enrolled at this university in scotland you went for like a month from what i understand but uh, because everything is online you decided to come back to genoa yes um i just wanted to have a conversation with you and and, and talk to you about your experience in our school and how this has impacted your you know your studies now your decisions so, so 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 you you enrolled in our school in dp1 right you were not one of our students since the beginning but you decided yes. to transfer to our school can you tell us a little bit about this story uh so basically um it's kind of a long story because i actually like kind of experienced a lot of uh like schools, different kinds of schools. Um, I was in a Liceo Scientifico before mm -hmm. for two years. Okay. And then I went to Hong Kong and okay. I was in a traditional Chinese school, but it was bilingual. So oh. it was both in English and in Cantonese. Right. So, so yeah. you also and studied then, in Chinese? You, you studied in Cantonese? Yes, wow. I did. But um, well, it was kind of like I was not required to uh, do the exams because it was kind of very hard. Sure. But um, but I did like listen to the lessons and everything. So, That's amazing. This is already one yeah. of the attributes of the IB learning profile to me, like risk. <laughs> you decided to just move to Hong Kong and go to a bilingual school. May I ask what made you decide to go to Hong Kong? What was the, the occasion? Why did you go? Okay, so, well, basically, um, I decided that I wanted to kind of leave my bubble here oh. in Genoa because I wanted to I wanted just wanted to see what it was what was the world like I wanted to see what was outside and I wanted to kind of try and challenge myself and I didn't really choose Hong Kong um because I I got a scholarship so I put like 10 destinations so I had a bit of everywhere in the world and I ended up in Hong Kong so uh, I said after this one year in Hong Kong, you decided to come back to Genova, but you didn't want to go back to an Italian school, right? No, because um, when I was there, like my my perception of the world changed, kind mm. of, and I saw that like the world was kind of also like the working world was kind of requiring different skills, like mm. not just knowledge, but there was more, and I also like I wanted more and. So I like um, I found out uh, about the Ivy schools because they were kind of more popular in Hong Kong than they are here. Yes. Uh, I guess they're more known, and so yeah. So I got to know the Ivy and I I looked for that on the internet and I I found out about it and I was like I liked it because I liked like the method that it used and like the goals and the like how it was made so um yeah I decided to to look for a school in my town so I was close to my family uh, yeah and so I ended up I tried with the the interview and to get in and that's so, how we found you and, and we found each other basically yes so, <laughs> I, I'm very happy that you made that decision because you've been one of our best students you graduated last year with a 
very high grade. And uh, so congratulations. You enrolled in our scientific track, right? So you studied mathematics, yes. uh, physics, what else? Um, I studied uh, math, HL, uh, physics, HL, um, English, A, mm -hmm. HL. Yes. And then I studied psychology, SL, um, Italian, A, literature, SL, yes. and biology, SL. And then, and then, of course, TOK and DX and essay. Sure. And then you had the two <laughs> that everybody has to take, which are TOK and extended essay. And you did extended essay in a science? No, I did it in psychology. Okay. And I studied the etiology of alcohol use disorder. Um, okay. It was very interesting. Very interesting topic. And I, I know this is going to be a diff uh, difficult question, maybe, but because it's always hard to compare systems. And you decided you didn't want to be in an Italian school. Uh, th there's nothing wrong with Italian schools. I went to Italian schools. I did the literature scientifico all the way through, and I'm very proud of it. I think it's a very good school. But uh, what are some of the differences that you have experienced and that you can tell us about? And, and why do you think that this system, the, the IBO method, has helped you? This is a lot of questions, but you know, I'll, I'll let you speak. So I was looking because I was looking for a school that would give me like more stimuli, mm -hmm. that would be more international for sure, and more uh, challenging in a way, and not challenging in a sense more difficult. But no. I wanted something. I wanted something that was, yeah, stimulating me, yes. motivating me, like giving me more yes. of these things. And also like trying to develop those skills that are actually anyway, very important in the, in the world. And when I was in Hong Kong, like I, I really did experience that. And so- Can you give us- Anything like teamwork. Yeah, sorry? Team yeah, like teamwork, <laughs> communicational skills, organization, uh, time management, uh, uh, working under pressure, and uh, research skills, and well, yeah, um, yeah. So I wanted something that was more dynamic. I kind of felt that the Italian school I was in was not exactly like that, and yeah, so that was what I was looking for, and this is what I found, and I'm really, really happy about it, and if I had to go back, I would do the same choice like a, a thousand times again. And actually like if I could, if I had known before, I would have chosen this school years before. So, um, but I didn't, so, but I'm lucky anyway. I, I, so yeah, and there was one thing in particular that I found out like, I think it's like the teacher's attitude mm -hmm. specifically. So, and also other things. Um, because like it felt like the teachers were more like ally allies. So um, because they were really, really like trying to help you and they were there. And I think this is also like an important thing, like being like a smaller school, it's better in the sense because you can focus more yes. on the students. So it's more, it's more, yeah. The like so me is centered on the students. So we teachers are there for the students. Yes. We're not just there. I think, yeah. uh, you know, maybe I am making it a little trivial, but uh, I think sometimes in, in Italian schools, the teachers are supposed to be there to try to trick you into studying, uh, to, to threaten you into studying, because if you don't study, then something's going to yes. happen. And it's about, it's about a negative type of energy. Yeah. Like, we are against, we're, you know, I, I like the word they use like ally because we are on the same side. We are not like yeah. on the other side. We want to make, make you, you know, uh, passionate about what you're studying, which, which is the key, not yeah. just make you understand that you have to study because it's your, it's your duty. It's not just your duty. It's something that you want to do. Yeah. And, um, and, and now, I mean, I know that you're just, you've just started because this is your first semester at university, right? Yeah. But um, is there anything from what you have learned in, in, in our school that you think is useful now that you are a, a uni student? I think like I feel like a lot of things and like all the, the skills that I was talking about mm -hmm. and also like I mean like the the system is more maybe I'm not saying more similar to the UK system but okay. in a way it's but for example, like imagine that you're, you're a student of sciences, you know how to do a lab report, right, for example. Yeah, exactly. So that, that's another thing. Like there is a, gr a really good thing about the program, which is that you do not only get to do the exams 
and like learn things um but you do not learn things by heart so it's not again like one of the things that I was going to say is that like for every subject and I'm not just talking about like physics and math or but also like psychology English uh um so yeah you really get to like think about what you're doing what you're studying and you always kind of ask like so what so what does this mean what is this implying how is this related to other subjects how is that useful how can you yes. how can you improve that have like some tons of things and so it's always like it's always like a discussion between the te- teachers and the students so it's not like a the teacher is talking and the students are taking notes so it's not that and i'm not saying that's wrong or that's bad but i think it really depends on the students so i would say that it's not really for everyone yes. like there are people that work better if they are I agree. More, yeah like like that or even as you were saying in the italian school kind of threatened like yes. yeah, yeah. Some threat. people need a little bit more push to do things and it yeah has to be, uh given yeah, to i think yeah, yeah I think that's not. Maturity. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I think it's also a matter of maturity. Like not all students mature at the same time or at the same level. And for sure, I think that the yeah. Loma program is a challenging program because it requires the student to try to mature and become, you know, more aware of what they do. I absolutely agree. Yes. Yes. There's also like a lot of individual, uh, individual studying yes. and again research. So there are this. Um, uh, parts of the program, like the IAs, the internal assessment and the extended essay, which I think are like a pain when you are like trying to to do that. But uh, then actually they're really, really useful because, um, yeah, because you're kind of developing, you're kind of doing some kind of re- research on your own. Yes. And so like that actually helps you to improve your uh, yeah, time management skills which in uni are again very very important because we do have tons of deadlines so it really is hard and also like I think in university you do have to make your own schedule and you have to learn things individually so it's it's more it's more of a like university approach I would say in a way it is. so so it really helps you with that I think like if I think about it so it, it, and yeah so it's great to hear from you because this is something knowing this is something that we we tell you know some of our prospective parents that come to our school and ask us about our school and we usually say as teachers that you know we teach something we teach a method we teach some of the skills that we as teachers have learned when we were at university like it was only when I uh, started studying mathematics at university because I studied mathematics or when I moved to the US that I actually learned some of those skills. And before I was just learning basically facts, basically. But, uh, but, but in our school, we start early. We start in DB1 with the, the research, with the sources, with the critical thinking and all of that. So it's great that you yeah. know, this gets confirmed <laughs> uh, firsthand. But listen, it's not just about schools and the subjects and the skills. You also did some pretty amazing project and things during your years, your two years, uh, at the Leda International. Can you tell us a little bit about your CAS project? Uh, yeah, oh, okay. So um, yeah, I did a few things. And um, cause also like one thing that I really like about the IB is that it does not like just um, make you a, I would say it makes you a citizen mm-hmm. and at, like 360 degrees, like all around. And so it does not only focus on you being good at school, like academically, but also in everything else, because that's, I think, just as much important. And so, yeah, so CAS and yeah, well, well, like one thing that I'm really proud of, Mm -hmm. because like, I think it really influenced a part of my life. So it really became important is that when I started, like they, Think there was kind of a tradition in the school because many people went to the ambulance and the and they they did the first aid course and so I was very interested so a friend and I 
Lucrezia, we joined together. And mm -hmm. so, and that, I really loved that. I loved it. And I think it really did matter in my life because actually I want to do medical biophysics, wow. medical physics or biophysics. Yeah. And I think this is kind of also because of that. And yeah, so it's really very nice. And then Incredible. I did other things. Oh, sorry. No, I, I, I'm very impressed, but let me make this clear. So during the lockdown and the coronavirus pandemic, you joined the Red Cross to do some like voluntary stuff. Yeah, White Cross. The White, White Cross. Cross. Wow. Yeah, White. <laughs> I think but yeah, I did. We, we are really very proud of you and Lucrezia and all the other kids that do these incredible uh, activities mm -hmm. for, for class. Mm -hmm. And um, anything else that you remember from your, your, from your two years at Delete International? Uh, well, um, other things about CAS, I did um, I did a few like camps. Uh, I did a summer camp at the Politecnico di Milano mm -hmm. about aerospace engineering. And then I did another camp with the University of Turin about um, particle physics. And then I joined some competitions like the uh, EUSO. And yeah. then I did the, another one a math, math competition and yeah and I did a few others which I do not remember right now but yeah I think it also kind of gave me the like the I'm not saying the idea but the the will like I don't know the kind of nothing the, the will to challenge myself the will yeah. to to do things and to look for things as like as I remember like my physics teacher and she always used to like um, ask us if we wanted to join this thing, this competition or this other thing, there's the summer program there, there's this, there's this, or do you know like the news, the latest research and everything. And I think that really like- Excellent. Yeah, it, it kind of empowered me. I don't know, uh, but uh, it really- yeah. You're excited so, about what's going on in the world and you know you become passionate about what you do because you yeah. are surrounded by passionate people. One thing that I love about my colleagues, because you were mentioning, you know, uh, the physics teacher, uh, but not only her and everybody else is like really passionate about what they do. So uh, not only are they knowledgeable yeah. of their subject, but they really love it and they are able to actually convey this to the students, in my opinion. At least I hope that we're doing that, but it looks to me like from mm -hmm. talking to you <laughs> that this is happening. So I'm really happy. Um, yeah. So we're going to switch to Italian, which is our first language for the last part of this interview, if you don't mind. Okay. <laughs> Parliamo un pochino in italiano. Eh, una domanda che ho fatto anche a Riccardo Taddei, che era un tuo compagno di classe l'anno scorso. Uh, che consiglio daresti o cosa diresti ai ragazzi che quest'anno stanno affrontando il diploma oppure quelli che si vogliono iscrivere nella nostra scuola se c'è qualche cosa, qualche, non dico qualche segreto da svelare perché quello magari qui sul canale YouTube nostro non si può dire ma se ci sono delle cose che piace, ti piacerebbe dire a loro Beh, Sicuramente di mettersi alla prova e di uh, sfruttare tutte quante le opportunità che dà quindi cercare proprio di mettersi in gioco e di sfruttare ogni singola cosa, e di chiedere, di fare domande, di, di mettersela tutta. Poi sicuramente per le... Scusa. Come hai fatto tu, ovviamente. Ma sì, nel senso, però cioè, è una cosa che poi ti lascia veramente qualcosa. Quindi sì, ma è così, è così stressante fare il diploma e sopravvivere a questi due anni? Bisogna proprio essere, come dire, supereroi oppure si può fare? Ma allora, sicuramente non è facile per niente, nel senso che è difficile. Ci sono dei momenti in cui hai quattro deadline in una settimana e quindi Beh. sicuramente è molto difficile. Quindi ci vuole un po' di... sicuramente... Di resilienza, come dire. Mm. sì, sicuramente un po' di resilienza e di riuscire ad organizzarsi e come dicevo prima, anche comunque di riuscire a studiare da soli, cioè di non aspettarsi che le persone poi ti rincorrono certo. per cercare di fare le cose. Cioè, bisogna, bisogna, bisogna... Una... questo sì, bisogna avere una esatto. certa situazione 
eh, lo dico spesso a delle famiglie che ci chiedono, eh, non penso che l'AIB sia per tutti, anche se è un metodo è un, un bellissimo secondo me, ma ci sono alcuni ragazzi che magari non hanno ancora quella maturazione a 16 anni di organizzarsi da soli, di riuscire a rispettare le scadenze, quindi richiede uh, sicuramente molto sforzo. Non sono soltanto gli studenti super intelligenti o, o come dire secchioni, se possiamo usare questa parola. Si usa ancora la parola secchioni, non lo so. Comunque, <ride> che, che riescono, ma sono quelli che riescono a organizzarsi meglio. Sì, beh, quello sicuramente sì. E poi però non è impossibile, nel senso ecco. che è, è assolutamente fattibile. E poi devo dire che comunque dà molta soddisfazione, perché quando finalmente uno riesce a submit the extended essay, è proprio una, una grande soddisfazione. Quindi so. sicuramente eh, dà soddisfazione. E poi appunto comunque vedo proprio per l'università che ci sono molte cose che mi sono servite. E quindi poi secondo me ne vale la pena. E quindi quello sì. Quindi è difficile. Sicuramente, ah. e non bisogna nasconderlo perché lo è, non è una passeggiata. Certo. Però è attibile. quindi alla fine basta organizzarsi bene, non lasciare le deadline lì e non fare tutte le cose all'ultimo. Non rispondersi <ride> e non procrastinare. Esatto. Quindi. Va bene Anna, ti ringrazio tantissimo del tuo contributo, mi ha fatto molto piacere vederti e quindi possiamo concludere questa intervista. Torna a trovarci, speriamo la prossima volta invece di vederci così in video come stiamo facendo di da un tempo, ma di vederci di persona, quindi ci incontriamo a un nostro pendeio da qualche parte. Ti ringrazio molto, a presto. Grazie. Bye. A presto.